Or samurai sama no tatakai kata janai. That means that's not the. So this is not the fighting the way a samurai would fight. No, that would be exactly how a samurai would fight. Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Let's have a look at this 18 minutes trailer, gameplay trailer of the new game Ghost of Tsushima, which will soon be released by Sucker Punch Studio. Already, that's very, very characteristic, typical Japanese. It actually reminds me of a place where I used to live called Ako in Japan. Uh, those, I believe, are maple, Japanese maple trees. So the Asa genome, so-called. Very, very beautiful, very characteristic. Obviously, the setting is the fact it's in Tsushima because it's the closest to Korea. Uh, so it's that sort of passage you know, from the Japanese archipelagos is kind of the closest one. So it's very relevant. So obviously the first thing that strikes the eye is the graphical capability of this uh, capabilities of this new of this engine that they're using for the for the game it's absolutely fantastic i mean not only their nature uh, look at the blades of grass it's outstanding uh, but in general the character the light i think from a graphical standpoint it's still I, I didn't think that a game after kingdom come deliverance would have amazed me uh, anymore uh, with the beauty of nature but this game absolutely does and uh, there is also this part here further on in the in the trailer where we see again Japanese white birch wood uh, typical typical of uh, of Japan of very very well represented very beautiful very characteristic it's you know it's this attention to details that personally amazes me not only it looks beautiful but it's also more immersive because it's so typically Japanese look look at the light rays the god rays it's splendid Fantastic work from a graphical standpoint. Now, one thing on the weapons, though, and this is the very first thing that strikes me. So the game has a very specific setting, namely 1274. So we're talking about the first invasion or Mongol invasion in Japan. We know there will be another one, 1281. I'm actually interested. I'd like to know if they're going to feature that, too. If, like, there is a, you know, as you're playing the main story, if at one point we have, like, a sort of years later uh, type of situation where we also get to experience the actual, the second mobilization, because in the first one we had the Mongols arriving with about 30,000 soldiers and in the second one we have a mobilization of 140,000 soldiers which is actually an over 4,000 I think 4,500 ships vessels which is the, the largest naval assault until World War II so very significant I it would, be, it would be very interesting to see interested to see if they're going to have us experience both but they chose a very specific period so this game is specifically set in feudal Japan and now you have to kind of keep in mind that we've got the classical period in Japan, which includes uh, Asuka period, Nara period and Heian period. And then you have the feudal uh, period in Japan, which comprises Kamakura period, Muromachi period and Ashikaga Momoyama period. So this game is specifically set in the Kamakura period. Now, do these samurai look like Kamakura period samurai? Not really. Um, and I understand that this is some sort of creative uh, license or liberty. Uh, developers of the game even said they're not looking for perfect historical accuracy. But on the other hand, it looks to me, and again, I understand this is a game. I'm not criticizing, I'm not attacking the, the game, but I'm just saying if you set it in the Kamakura period, it would be nice if the samurai looked like Kamakura period samurai. And even the fighting style, we're going to look at that now, uh, looks more like Edo Jidai. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. So for a samurai of this period, we should not really see uh, even katana, and so the daisho katana and wakizashi. What we should be seeing is tachi and Koshi katana. So the, the tachi, as you know, is a bigger version of the katana and is also mounted differently. In this case, it's clearly a katana because it's mounted with the cutting edge up, which is the way you wear a sword uh, later on, and I'm talking difference of centuries. Um, the uh, tachi was worn with the blade facing down. I understand this might look like a small detail. There are also differences in the way the tsuka sometimes is assembled, but the way it's signed is different. But generally speaking, the way they are mounted now, now it looks like katana and wakizashi. I can't really see very well, maybe we'll see it later, if that's a wakizashi or if that's a koshi katana. But a koshi katana shouldn't really have, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, but a koshi katana shouldn't have any tsuba it shouldn't have any protection so that to me looks like a Hedo Jidai uh, Daisho but even if it wasn't even if I'm missing this because I'm not seeing it very well um, it still is mounted these are still mounted with 
cutting blade up, not the way uh, samurai in the Kamakura period would have been wearing their swords. Looking at the combat here, I like, okay, yeah, the Yaido idea is cool and this game needs to be seen as a cinematic game, okay? This is not a realistic representation of combat and I'm gonna dwell on that uh, stance in a minute, uh, but this is not a realistic representation of combat. This is a very cinematic representation of combat. So you have to look at it this way. If you if you play this game because you're expecting a Kenjutsu simulator of the Kamakura period, then no. Uh, but if you're looking at a game that gives you the vibes or the feeling that you are inside one of those uh, movies like a Kurosawa Akira movie, like Ra uh, Run, for example, um, then it will. Then it will give you the, this. And in fact, there is also this thing that they show where you can play uh, the video game uh, in black and white with grained filter and I think it's a fantastic idea. I love that idea. But the way he fights is very Edo Jidai. For example, we see the Chiburi here. Now, anyone of you who has practiced either Yaido or Kenjutsu, any style really, will be familiar with Chiburi. So I'm sure the people that practice Yaido Kenjutsu are going to love that. They're going to be like, oh wow, look at that, it's so authentic. Uh, you know, the, for those who don't know, Chiburi is this uh, move after you perform a cut, after you kill, you do this wide movements to uh, get rid of the blood on your blade. And the Katori Shintoryu is a very specific one where they roll the blade like this and then hit it. These movements, however, were not done by the samurai. This is important to understand. Well, yes, Edo Jidai Samurai during a period of peace, absolutely, but it's a ritualistic movement. It's a movement that wants to represent uh, the idea of I'm go I've killed someone and I'm doing a beautiful movement now to sort of represent the fact that my blade is covered in blood and now I've removed the blood, but this never happened in combat. And this is actually something that I talked about uh, with my Kenjutsu pra um, sensei, so as I practice Katori Shintoryu, and he agreed with me, no Chiburi in real samurai history. It is a later invention, and it, because in a real situation, if you put some, I'm not saying put blood on a blade, but I'm saying put any liquid on a blade that simulates blood and try to get rid of it with any move, from any style, any kind of Chiburi, um, you will see that it doesn't work. It does not remove the blood. That's not how it works. So did the samurai get rid of the blood on the blades? Absolutely, because the reason is, the reason why you want to do that is because say you've got your katana and it's all covered in blood. The moment you put it back into the saya, all that blood is going to go inside your scabbard. You don't want that because it's going to make it into a mess, moldy and not really functional. It's also going to be terrible for preserving the, the blade. So what you do, you take a cloth and you remove the blood. That's how they would have done it. After the kill, take a cloth, remove the blood, and put it back in the scabbard. If they want this game to be more realistic, that's what we should see. But they they didn't choose that way. They choose to go for a more, more spectacular and cinematic representation. Again, I have nothing against this, but it's important to keep in mind because I don't want people to look at this and think, since they did say that they worked with uh, Kenjutsu sensei and masters to recreate a very original representation of samurai combat, I'd like to underline, it looks very Edo Jidai, and this is Kamakura. And, and even in Sengoku Jidai, we wouldn't have seen that um, in the Warring States period. Also, in a for a Muromachi period, samurai, I don't know if they're going to do this, but I think they will. Um, we will see a lot of Seiza. I think we will. So the sort of way the Japanese sit down and then, you know, they, they sort of need and then sit back on on the heel of their of their feet again not the proper way of sitting in a Muromachi period. It's an Edo Jidai pushed idea. Now, yes, in Japan, in our day and age, everyone sits in Seiza. It's the correct way of sitting in Japan, even though it's actually pretty bad for your knees, uh, but they do it. Um, but we shouldn't imagine samurai doing that. And instead, in every mo samurai movie, they're all sitting in Seiza. In every video game, like Way of the Samurai, one of my favorite series of video games on the samurai, every samurai is sitting in Seiza. So how would they have sat uh, in, in real life, in this period, and in the Sengoku Jidai period, they would have been sitting in what is called Agurao Kaku, so basically crossing your legs and sitting on the floor. Uh, this stance I was noticing, it looks more like a um, Hasso no Kamae, Hasso Gamae. Uh, in some styles it's called In no Kamae. Uh, it's interesting because in the styles that I've practiced, uh, the we tend to keep the right elbow down 
because you don't want it to be a target for your opponent. But I have seen people in other styles do it just like they're showing here. I would be interested if there is a reason why they chose this specific way of doing it, but I'm gonna say authentic in both cases. Now, it's interesting how they represented samurai armor very well. It didn't represent Mongolian armor of the time very well. I wonder why, because they definitely did make some research on samurai armor. I think it's looking really good. I'm sure that there will be non-period armor, but what I've seen so far, it looks great. So I wonder why they didn't do that for Mongolian armor. Uh, but probably before I can talk about this, I need to actually get the game. And I love the effectiveness of the cuts. So couple of hits, sometimes a one single hit will kill your opponent. I think that's really cool. I mean, if you slice the throat of, of, of your opponent, he's dead. And I like that this game is giving this kind of Bushido Blade uh, vibes, if, if any of you is like my age and you remember early PlayStation 1 Samurai games. Uh, I'm glad to see that. I imagine if this was one of those games where you hack them a million times so they never die. Oh, they do die. But, you know, I think I think that was a good choice. They made it very realistic in terms of the actual damage that a weapon deals to the human body, epithelial, epithelial human tissue and all that. I've actually made a video on that if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a bit of a scientific approach to this, um, to what blades do to the human body. But, okay, so the the, the ninja sections, um, I think it's a good good idea from a gameplay point of view that you can play both as a samurai and as a ninja with the same ninja, with the same character. Uh, probably I should say shinobi or shinobi no mono since as ninja is not a period accurate term, it's a later term, but you know what I mean. Historically speaking, some samurai were also shinobi. Samurai were brutal. When they were given an order, they will do it no matter what. So the idea of Oh, I'm gonna let you pick up your weapon because I'm honorable and therefore you you know I, I disarmed you and I'm not taking advantage of that. It's it's not true. It's not how Bushido works. Um if a samurai was skilled enough to disarm his opponent, he would take advantage and slit his throat. He would chop his head off if needed. So yes, samurai were honorable, but from the perspective of feudal Japan, which is not the perspective of the 21st century, I'd like to say. So sometimes we expect, uh, oh, a samurai would never do this, a samurai would never do that. I've even heard people in forums saying a samurai would never f use uh, gunpowder because it's dishonorable. Yeah, go tell that to Oda Nobunaga, the mass-produced amount of Tanegashima Teppo, the matchlock type aquabus that the samurai did use. Uh, also, we see the tori, uh, some of you might have recognized these and my, some people might say, hey, but why are they not red? Uh, but that's fine. Uh, the traditional tori, even the oldest one, they could be made of wood, but they could also be made of stone. Modern ones sometimes are made of steel, um, but they can be painted red. So the tori being the gates that, you know, allow you entrance to the, sh to the shrine, so the Shinto, the so-called jinja in Japanese. Uh, it, it kind of, it's there to let you know that you're going from a normal area into a sacred ground um, and yes they're most most famously they're red but sometimes they left them unpainted so that's absolutely absolutely fine this this is spectacular like i would buy the game just for this the enemies are afraid of you they don't want to die they're not stupid minions that don't care about their lives and just throw themselves at you uh, even though they see that you're sliding through everyone it's great this is very characteristic and these kind of details you know these more realistic details are what i'm talking about i mean does the game need to have this no you can have people just running at me like total idiots like it usually happens in video games and you just slide through them but in this case i love it it makes you feel like a badass it gives you the idea of immersion of these are actual human beings they don't want to die they wanted to kill me but now that they see see that I'm a master, um, they are afraid, they're afraid for their lives. I think this is spectacular. It's those little realistic things, and I'm not saying the game should be 100% realistic, because I understand that sometimes you need to give priority to gameplay uh, because the game needs to be fun. But this, this is a realistic thing that makes it fun even more fun and I like these things and that's what I'm looking for in these kind of games and that's why I make these videos video reviews it's not that I don't understand that the, this is a work of fiction it's just that sometimes very realistic things can make the game better like in this case spectacular very good 
Well, samurai sama no tatakai kata janai. That means that's not the, so this is not the fighting the way a samurai would fight. No, that would be exactly how a samurai would fight, particularly all the way up to the Sengoku Jidai. Uh, this whole idea of samurai as a philosophical figure, samurai as a hero, samurai representation of good with his spirit inside the katana, all of this is Edo Jidai. All of this is elucubrations that you can create during a time of peace. The Sengoku Jidai and the Kamakura Jidai, they were killing machines and they would have been brutal to see. Anyways, I like the um, the fighting. I like it. It's Again, it's very cinematic, but I like it. Um, I think from a gameplay point of view, uh, it's going to work. It looks very fluid and most importantly, it looks very fun. Just as long as we understand that what we see, it's not the most accurate representation of the Kamakura Jidai and that there are some things that are, I am going to buy this game immediately. It, I'm very happy that it's not another Souls game. Uh, I'm happy that it's more, it kind of gives me the idea of a mix between a uh, Assassin's Creed and a Witcher game, to be honest, and I, I think it's very good. The only thing I'm wondering, and I'd like to leave you with this question, because maybe you can help me understand this, is why did they choose the Mongol invasion? Why choosing that specific period if anything we see in reality is more of a Sengoku Jidai, Edo Jidai kind of, uh, Jidai meaning period, um, representation of samurai. Uh, if that's what you want, if that's the sort of thing you, you wanted to represent in a game, then why not setting it directly in the Sengoku period? Why not setting it directly in the Edo, early Edo period? Why choosing the Kamakura period if you're not going to represent it as the Kamakura period? That is my question and is the question I'm leaving you with. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you going to play this game? Are you going to buy this game? Are you excited or are you disappointed? I mean, it's up to you, I suppose. So uh, let me know because I'm really curious. And if you liked this video, I will buy the game and I will make more in-depth uh, analysis if you're interested of both armor, weapons and, and fighting and combat. I could even invite my Katori Shintoryu Sensei and we could review the combat together. Let me know if you like that idea in the comments below. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye. Okay,